What is up everybody? This is Zach with Veteran Construction. We're gonna show you how to do this chimney wrap here with the uh, with the stair step in it. So this goes on, just got this roughly like that. And this is how they had it before. And we're gonna basically do pretty much the same thing. I kind of like the angle they have at it. This is a 412 roof, so I usually just go back at a 412. But we're gonna get this all cleaned off and, and then uh, show you how we make our tins. All right, so James is about to need some baby tins. Let me show you these. These are uh, the color of the chimney we're using. So uh, I always try to bend my own out of a color match because sometimes a little bit is visible. So um, we're gonna show you how to bend more of those. And then we're gonna come back up after he runs out a little bit. And uh, we're gonna get the, ooh, look at Boy Cup going. We're gonna get the numbers on the chimney. See that progress, Boy Cup. Oh, oh. Oh man, you're going so slow because I'm on here. He's also on a left-handed side. All right, so what I got here is um, I've already made a few of these. We cut these in eight-inch strips, and uh, the coil itself is 24. So this is the third one that we're using. Um, when I make uh, baby tins, step flashing, whatever you want to call it, for myself, I always do them seven and a half inches by four. Okay, and that gives us a nice big flashing. Um, for our shingles. So what I did was I came out here and I marked seven and a half, 15, 22 and a half, 30, 37 and a half. And then I did the same thing this way. What I did was I took my square to it while I could use this, this side. And that way I just squared them all down. And I'll show you why right now. It's my brand new brake. So happy about it. We gotta adjust it though. Still got a little little tightness in the middle and not so much on the ends. All right. So I'm going to give this a bend. I always underbend my step flashing just a hair because it makes it easier to install. So now we've got these square lines and we can just take our snips and we can just go right up them. And you can just cut each each side and then flip it around and do the same thing. And this is going to get us all of our baby tins. Okay. Now here's why I said that I underbend my baby tins, my step flashing here. All right. So if I have it at a at a perfect 90 or just over bent, here's what it's going to happen. When I put my nails here, this is going to hang off the wall. You see how all these aren't? It's because I underbent it. So when it's underbent at this angle here. What you do is you put it on there and when you push this tight and you put these nails in it, get the old left, the old loyal lefties gun, use it just like he did. Sorry, usually I nail up higher. I don't know why I put that nail that low. It's not that big of a deal. That'll never leak or nothing like that. But uh, there's the point there. So that's why we, st and then when the next shingle comes, it'll put a little weight on it and everything. And that's how we keep these tins nice and flat to this wall. All right, the next step is finding the numbers here. So they've got some stuff that's already grinded in. Sorry, I'm moving like an old man. I got a, I got an injury over here on my knee. Um, let's see. So they've got this already grinded into the brick. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go with their same number here. Over here at seven and a half. Over here at seven and a half. So um, I just need to keep track of that number. Someone's got my pencil actually, but um, Seven and a half is my number. That's all I need to remember there. Thank you. Just write it on your tape if you want. That's the front, okay? And then for the sides and the back, it's real easy. You see where all their stuff is? You can just measure, you see it's nine inches there. There's some stuff there, nine. So I can just make it 12 inches. All right, so one thing I forgot to tell you guys was how to get the length, which I'm sure it's pretty obvious. You just measure the chimney and add some. The chimney measured 80. And I did 86, so that just gives me a little extra play. I'm not wasting too much aluminum, but I'm also not going to be even close to short. So what I do here to cut it is I get just a regular old framing square. And I level it, or I just put it flush here on the bottom. You can put it, you can put your hand on it, put pressure on it, maybe a little bit of a knee. It's flat so it doesn't, it doesn't uh, bend it or anything, make any bad marks. Score it once or twice depending on my blade. 
you get a nice square cut also. All right, I messed up my piece, so I'm gonna show you guys something and what I forgot to do here. But anyway, let's just show you the right way. I'm gonna mark 12 here. 12 here. I'm gonna get this cut. Get that lined up for me. Good. Flip it upside down and do that. Do a hem bend. I turn it this way because it's a little easier to do. Forgot where I'm at now, so. Little more half inch. I feel like it. Have a good one there, Brad. Like it? Yes. Can't, I can't put the camera on and bend that part to the, that hip at the same time. That's fine. Just give me right under there. Actually, I got it. I got one. Nope. No, I don't. Good? Yep. There it is. There it is. That was quick. Yep. So, um, what I'm going to do now is put me in at the, right at the hem right there, Brad. Right there. Okay. Now we got that nice smooth nice. bottom. And then what I do before I bring this up, we're going to be cutting off pretty much all this top so this doesn't have to be square or anything. Our stuff's only going to be about seven and a half inches tall. But in order to keep this from bending while we're bringing it up, I'm going to bend it kind of like a piece of fascia. That way it's a little stiffer. Mm. Okay. So now that extra bend holds everything together. So now we can take this up there and get it marked real easy. All right, so let's go do that. Hey, who just threw that plastic off the roof? I don't know. It fucking hit me, you jack off. <laughs> he got the wobbles like he got hit by Brock Lesnar. Hit you. Brock Lesnar hit. Now you're throwing shit at me. Fuck all you guys. I, I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> and that's the homeowner. <laughs> <laughs> that little boy cup. Okay. His hair's getting long. Been, uh... Hell yeah. Video just got good. <laughs> <laughs> now we're having fun. Okay. All right. So what I'm gonna do here is come down here, Brad. Is I'm just going to still come out. We haven't secured that yet. Do all that at the end. But we're just going to trace that to right there, and this is where we want our thing to start. Okay. Now right here is where we want our bend, but we need an extra little bit to tuck in, okay? So we're gonna be basically marking the top of every one of these as we go up, and that's, that's going to allow us to have enough space to tuck in. Copy. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and trace this level, okay? for whatever, however many inches. Okay, then we're gonna go back up here at, at, an, at a 412 angle. We're gonna go level again, but we gotta be right on this one now. So, okay. So I'm just gonna keep leveling over from, you know, like this point. I'm saying the far right is what I'm saying. On the top of the joint. And that way I've got something to continue off of. You know what I mean? I can go into this a little bit, but I wanna come up to this next one here. And I want to keep leveling over. Okay, and that way I've got a mark to go off of.
And I'm going to mark roughly where the bottom of this stuff is now. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. So I'm going to keep marking this on all of these. And it's okay if these raise this up a little bit because you saw what we did earlier, we put color match tins down. So if it ends up having to go up a little to get in there, it's not a huge deal, okay? So. Okay, so now what we can do is we've got all of our marks. Let's take this down there. And we know that we have to line up with this one up here. Okay, and I'm gonna go ahead, uh, Brad, get that nice and square down at the bottom. Okay. All right, so I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna trace this up here, and that's no big deal. All right, so you can see, now let go. You can see on this back, I trace this too. See that? So now I can uh, transfer that so I know where my ending is and everything. I've got it, Brad. You just got to chill. Sorry. Take 25. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right, get it together. I got to get the backwards slap hat. Yourself, like, slap yourself one backwards time. Hat like just a, like this. No, what's that movie? It works. What's that movie? With the, where he turns his hat back. Oh, his arm over off. the top. That's yes, when he, hit, he hits that switch ah, and then he's ready. Ah, Strike getting it. Ah. Okay. Sylvester Sloan. All right, here we go. Okay. All right, so come, back, come down here, Brad. All right, so if you notice here, we've got, I'm just gonna count these up for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 sides, right? I knew that when I messed up this piece. If you look what happens, I've got a really big thing because I, I divided by 10 because I figured that would work. For some reason, it ran me short. All I've got is this here that was going to finish it off what i actually had was one two three four five six seven eight nine so i divided by ten and got nine so noticing patterns i'm going to divide by 11 to get 10. and uh i know a trick that works for vents like that it has to do with spacing but for some reason my mind's not really wrapping wrapping it around this right now so what i'm going to do is i'm going to divide my number, which was 77.25 by 11, okay, which comes out to be 7.06, which is basically seven inches, okay? Doesn't need to be that exact on something like this. But if I want everything to be seven inches across the total length, the 77, I have to keep in mind that I'm putting a 412 on these angles. So I, I made a mark here earlier, and then I put a 412 pitch on that, right? Went right through here to a 412. Trace that. Well, if you go right up to where this is level, you can see that that takes out an inch. Okay, you see that on my speed square right down here is an inch. So I need to add an inch. So what I need to do is instead of doing seven inches, I'm going to do eight. Okay, so I'm going to mark eight here. Okay, and I'm going to 412 it up. Boom. Okay, put my tape here. Mark eight inches. 412 that up. Gonna mark eight inches here. Might as well trace that also. Girlfriend's calling. Okay. <laughs> well, I thought that was top priority. <laughs> no, her calling's not top priority. Getting this right at the end of the day is. All right, so. <laughs> I'm gonna mark eight, okay? Now I'm running out of length here because I didn't want to overdraw and have too much to erase later. So, make that mark a little higher so I can see it. It's probably really hard for you guys to see any of these marks. Yeah. It's hard We're to see through the camera. That. Keep doing that, measure up eight. Another, another phone call. Okay. Don't care. Don't read out the whole number. Just making more work for me on the editing table. That's why I'm getting mad. <laughs>
I did that one on purpose. Of course, we're doing it on the common. Yes. Now, when I draw on this eight across this, this should be roughly, and when I say roughly, I mean it doesn't have to be perfect because this length can be a touch shorter or a touch longer. Seven We're looking for something very close, right? Yeah. So if I flip this over, that mark that I trace should be pretty much directly in line with it. So what I can do is I can basically put a I can put a 412 on this right here, and we can and we can see. So this should be going like that roughly. Okay. So my mark was roughly right there. Going down at this angle. Let's see if I was close. Super close. So I got it within an inch. And that's probably the addition of that .06 added up throughout all of this. So now I've got a perfect stair step. Because if you look here, right up this angle, it's also seven and a half. Right? You see that? Right to... Uh, Right to my mark there? Yeah. I can't see anything through the camera, but... Zoom up? Probably because it's just my camera's under 5%. But there you go. So that's the same as this, meaning we hit our right mark. So basically the key was, what I screwed up and didn't do there is, I needed 10 steps. I needed to divide by 11 to get the correct thing. So this is the longest one I've ever done. All right, so basically I'm going to cut this out now. And that's the next step here. All right, so I'm just going to cut this off so that it makes it a little easier for me to do my snipping. Okay, now I can get the cut. All right, so as you can see, I set this on something that's, you know, a little more than a, like about three eight. Oh yeah, these staples are three eighths. So these are three eighths staples. I just set them down to make sure that this works out. And you'll have this problem once in a while. That's why, uh, that's why we always make sure we do those color match tins. James, don't you tell me my flush there? Right there. Okay. So now that raised us up so that everything's square. Cause I started running a little shy down there. Okay. So I'm gonna make these marks now. Make sure I stay square if you can. Yeah, you're good there. Okay. You like it? Yeah. We're gonna remark these. Okay. All right, so make sure you're perfectly flush and I'm gonna trace my back now. I left myself a little hang off. You good? Yep. Still that same exact mark, perfect. All right, so we're gonna go bend this now. All right, so what we've actually gotta do here is transfer these marks, okay? So I'm just gonna eyeball this one. Okay, the rest are easy because you can just kind of use the edge. Okay, let's just mark all of these because we have to bend them in the break. So let's just mark that. I'll just mark all these at one time. Now pretty much all of these are exactly at the bottom of my mark, so I actually don't need to transfer them. This is probably the only one, but what I'll do is I'll just cut it a little deeper. Brown. Same with this one, just a smidge. And the rest are all just about good. Okay. So now we can go take this in the break. So what I'm doing here is I've got this in line with my, I don't have my pencil on me in line with my cuts and I also got this out of the way for when it gets bent. Brad's just going to let it twist naturally. Okay. Okay. We're going to give that an easy 90. 
this little bit's not going to bend that great, but it's fine. You just finish that off and you can see it's still pretty crisp bend. It's all going to get caulked right along that edge anyway. All right, so we're going to continue to knock this out. Push out. All right. did was um, I'm making these marks with a with a uh, marker so I put the piece up and it went like this and then like this what I did was I marked that mark and I marked this you just got to make sure you go past over here um, because on the inside it's gonna be hidden by the flashing itself so you don't have to worry about being super particular but right here is where this ends and then the same thing right here again and the same thing right here you don't want to overdo it way out Otherwise, you're gonna have to try and caulk that. And it's gonna make your caulk, you know, a little tougher to do, and it might end up pretty sloppy. So what I do is I just got a grinder with a diamond blade here. Um, if you ever do the chimney flashing where you go like this, you can just snap a line down the brick. Um, that's one that I do pretty often as well. Uh, that one you can you can just put a diamond blade and a regular skill saw, and then chop that. But for something like this, you got to use a grinder. So just a regular diamond blade. Uh, this gets really dusty. So in order to prevent that dust from sitting on these, I have someone run a blower at the same time. It's not completely necessary. It, usually you can blow off pretty decent unless you've got like a red, a red colored mortar or something like that. It can really stain the shingles and be a little tough to get out. So I recommend keeping one of these on it while you go after it. Brad, I'd like to give you the bottom, but my knee hurts way too damn bad to get up. Okay. Good right there. So it fits in. The coffin's over here around there. Look at that. Pound town. Boom. She's, she's in there pretty good. Okay. So we've got our back trace that still looks good, right? pretty spot on. So we're going to go ahead and bend that. Nice. Go ahead and give this a set. That's how that's gonna look. So we can go ahead and get this thing all tucked in and secured now. I can actually just put uh, one of these cut nails in the back. in here again.
Here, hold this, hold this this way. So now we're gonna get it secure. 